Hey there, everybody. It's Rick here again with Dog River Design Everything Tech, and we have another little micro PC project. Um, yeah, because I've already showed you guys the little Nook 11 Enthusiast. That's like a super cool little all-in-one laptop without the screen, essentially. Today, we're kind of taking a step up, and if you've got a drawer that's got some extra computer parts sitting in it, this may be a really fun project for you. Let's get started. Okay, so what do we have here? This is the Nook 9 Extreme. Uh, this is a essentially this model, and I've got it pulled up here on the screen so I can kind of read the specs. This is a 9th gen i7, basically a laptop processor. It's got a compute uh, little plug-in, goes in a PCI type slot in here. Uh, we're gonna take this apart. You guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. But it's a self-contained little compute module, and it's got, uh, the processor, it's got your RAM slots, it's got your hard drive slots or your NVMe slots. So this can take two laptop DIMMs, uh, DDR4, and it can take two NVMe's. So it's actually you can put quite a bit of stuff in it. What makes this, like, I think better, uh, depends how you look at it, definitely more capable. You can put a GPU in this, and I've got some GPUs stacked on the table here. We're gonna kind of talk about what will fit, what won't fit when we take this apart, because that's really the booger boo. Okay, so I would not buy this with the intention of having to buy RAM, having to buy NVMe, I think, and then a graphics card. You gotta put a G GPU in this, or you're just you know really running on just the Intel integrated, which is not awesome. But if you had a drawer, like I do, and you've got RAM and uh, NVMe drives that you've pulled out of laptops or other things you've done, you've just got some spare parts, there is a, a place where this may be a lot of fun to play with. I would think that if you're building something from scratch and you want to have something that's going to game and do work and all this stuff, build a full-size PC. The little mini stuff, as much as I like them, they are not cost-effective. They're great for a hobby. They're a lot of fun. But... Uh, they're going to cost you more money. And if you're on a budget, this may not be the right way to go. But let's say you do have some RAM and NVMe is sitting in a drawer. I, I did. I happen to have some RAM. In fact, if I go back and look at the video where I did on that Nook 11 enthusiast, it actually came with an extra NVMe. It actually had two two terabytes in it. So there's four terabytes. And it had an extra set of 32 gig RAM. So I grabbed one of the drives, a two terabyte drive, that I wasn't using in that. And I grabbed the 32 gigabytes of RAM and threw that in here. So now, you know, I have basically, I kind of got that for free, it didn't cost me anything. Uh, and so I have this plus that, and now I just need to put a GPU in it. Now, I've had this for a while. I think I bought this end of 2022, I think. So I've had this a while. And so back then I paid a lot more than what you can buy one for right now. And this is why I want to do this video. I'm looking here on Amazon. They have this unit bare bones. So no RAM, no hard drive, no GPU for 350 bucks, which isn't bad. I mean, really, uh, you got the processor. All you need is some RAM and some storage and a GPU and you're good to go. It's, I, I like this because it has the power supply built in, which is cool. Yeah, so I already had a bunch of these GPUs. These don't fit. We're going to talk about why they don't fit. They should fit. They technically are the right size, but this, the PCB is too long. I'll show you guys. It's like off by a couple of mils. Really, really close. But these all do work. So let's say you had the spare parts, you put $350 into the chassis and you go to eBay and you look up like this little guy here. This is a little HP uh, GPU. This is a 1660 Ti. This wouldn't be a bad fit for this. This is gonna be more money and I would try and find one used. This is a 3060. This is the uh, MSI Aero. So this is an ITX class GPU. This works as well, works pretty good. And then I've got some more uh, HP sort of single fan cards. This is, I think this is a, oh, this is a 55, I can't see. Yes, this is a 55, RX 5500, four gig. This is a power color, same sort of size, right? This is a power color. This is a 5600, six gig. That's actually, if you can find one of those for like 100, 120 bucks, 
you're in pretty good shape. You've got a kind of a really cool little hobby system that you can have a lot of fun with. Now, how does it come out spec wise, right? So I was just going to give raw numbers, but I thought without context, the numbers really don't mean much. So what I've done, and I'll do this going forward as well. I think I've talked to you guys about my Intel system over here that is the 11900K. That is gone as far as the processor is gone. I'm pretty sure that's a bad processor and I'm trying to get with Intel to get that arm made. I bought a 13700K, dropped it in there and it has been working flawlessly. I didn't change anything but the processor, dropped it in. Uh, yeah, and I also, in the midst of all of that, trying to figure things out, I put my 3090 in there. So now what I've got for my main workstation is a 13700K, a 3090, um, 64 gigs of RAM. And yeah, the thing's working absolutely flawlessly. It's wonderful. I'm like thrilled with it. That's my baseline, okay? So when I'm looking at how does a computer perform, it's gonna be as related to that. That is what I use day in, day out. That's what I do my content creation on. That's what I do all of my work on. That's my baseline. So when I look at things, it's going to be compared to that. Now we may pull in some other numbers, but in general, let's look at this. Now, this I had actually hoped to, the reason I bought it in the first place, was I wanted to give this to my wife to use as her workstation. She's um, got an office, it's off grid, so it's solar and runs off batteries. The whole building, right? Air conditioner, the whole deal is battery operated <laughs> with solar power to charge batteries during the day. So power consumption is kind of a big deal. I couldn't give her like that system. I'd have to triple the battery the storage, just is not effective. So I got this thinking this should work well. And as long as she doesn't try and do video editing, this does, works great. It is actually really decent. The problem is it doesn't have the grunt, like the raw grunt it needs for heavy lifting. And that's what I didn't really realize going into that. So as much as I was hoping this was gonna be like the perfect little unit for her, uh, or you know, for me, like in a temporary station or whatever, it doesn't have that. Now, does it game? It actually games really well. So let's just look at the numbers. Uh, we're gonna start with Cinebench and we should have screens. We can show you guys how all this goes together. So Cinebench, um, this is a multi-core score. It's pretty low, 6,000 and some change as compared to my 13700, which is 30,000. So what you're going to see as we go through these numbers is, <laughs> yeah, this or my main system is anywhere between three to five times faster than this, just in raw compute. We're talking CPU power. Again, if you're doing, you know, your regular office stuff, Outlook, Office apps, browsing the web, that kind of stuff, even Photoshop and those things. This is perfectly fine. It's when it gets to that, when it's really got to do some heavy lifting, like when it got to the video editing, it just kind of died and it was unusable to the point where she got so frustrated she was about to throw it through a window. At that point, we gave her a better system. Now she's happy. So Yay! A uh, single core score on this is a little over a thousand, so almost 1100, like a 1080, uh, whereas my desktop's almost 2000. Big difference, right? That's, that's a big chunk of compute difference, right? So we go to Geekbench 6. We have a single core score here of 1422, where my 13700 is 2785. Again, we're almost looking at a 2x multiplier right there, just in raw compute. We get to the multi-core score and it's more than double. It's almost 6,000, excuse me, 6,000 here and over 15,000 there. Uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about the graphics processing because I have in here the, probably the highest end spec card you can get for this. We'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm really mostly interested in just the CPU because that's really where I was lacking. GPU, I have a 3060 Ti in here. That's actually fine, performance-wise. It That wasn't the problem. It was that the CPU just didn't, that six core, 12 thread, being a laptop, being ninth gen, yeah, that's where it kind of fell apart. Um, I go down here, uh, PC Mark 10, 
The overall score, we'll just talk about that for a minute, is 56.07 here. It's almost 9,500 there. Again, big difference, right? Pass mark, a CPU score here is 12,000, almost 12,500. That's 45,000. Again, we're talking multiples, right? That's a lot of uh, contrast in the compute power. If we go to like the 3D, uh, well, Time Spy, um, again, overall, this was 10,000, not bad. And that's because it's got that 3060i in it, right? That was 18,000. So uh, on the CPU processing, like, because they have that little matrix there, this was about 6,000 and that was 16,000. So when we look at that, we can see where this just doesn't have the raw horsepower on like the heavy lifting tasks. So basic work, playing games, awesome. Heavy lifting, video editing, office, like a heavy duty office content creation, which is what I was hoping it would do. It won't do it. <laughs> But let's say that is not what you're going to do. Let's say you do need a small, little, compact. Uh, this can just like fit in a bag. You could take it to with a hotel, wireless keyboard, HDMI to the thing. You could have actually quite a bit of processing power here. That's pretty cool. And just a really small package, right? So at $350, if you had spare parts and you weren't having to buy a bunch of stuff, you're going to have to buy a GPU. Would this make sense? Well, you are going to have to decide that, right? So uh, I could tell you that playing Valorant, this thing is pushing uh, almost 300 for, uh, FPS. So very, very fast. I mean, more than sufficient, right? Uh, and that's at full max out settings. Not that that matters on Valorant. Uh, on a medium setting with uh, like a full field of view and Halo, uh, Halo Infinite, um, it's pushing 160, 180 so plenty of horsepower for um, for the uh, for gaming. That's the word I was looking for. So how does this uh, how does this work? How do you get into it? All that kind of fun stuff. Let's talk a little bit about that because I do want to walk through the insides here because um, if you can't find the GPU, don't buy this, right? If you can't find the GPU you think you're gonna be happy with don't get it. If you do, if you find a deal, or maybe you've got one, right, hanging out. This, These actually, well, this one came out of an HP pre-built, like a little, uh, it was like a, not a Victus, it was one of the little pavilion gaming ones. Um, this is what that came from, came from, and you can buy those for about 100 bucks, plus or minus, the like the 5600s a little bit more, maybe 130. Uh, the TI, the 1660 Ti is running about, or 100, 100 and something used on eBay. Are you willing to do that? Does that work for you? If it does, maybe a decent option. So for five, less than 500 bucks, you have a kind of a nice, cool, compact little computer that's pretty neat, fun to play with, kind of a cool hobby, maybe worth it. I don't know. You let me know in the comments. All right, so I'm going to shut the computer down here. And we're going to take this apart. I do really like how easy it, it um, d disassembles and reassembles. Okay. Okay, so there's our, there's our box. Pretty cool, very small. I do like it. Now, the graphics card I have in here, as I said earlier, is I think probably the most performant you can put in this. Now, I, I would like to try the 4060 Solo. Um, I think that would be fun to try, but I don't know. Uh, this isn't PCI Gen 4, so it's Gen 3, which means that it's 8x, because that's 4x8, so you'd be running 3x8. I don't know. I don't know if that's, I don't know how that would work. It would be, I, I, I'm hoping to get a 4060 Solo and put it in here to see how it would work but that's gonna have to wait for a while because I don't have the cash to do that at the moment. I had all of these already. So the, the GPU I have in here right now is actually was specially designed for this chassis. Uh, this is the Asus Dual Mini, and it's designed, as I said, it, it was expressly made for like Mini ITX and this system exactly, which is pretty cool. Um, it fits in there rather nicely, I think. It has, oops, one 
uh, eight pin up top here and it's actually there's two eight pins that this comes with one kind of can go on the side or if it's if this is oriented other ways it makes it easier to plug it in but it has like a 90 degree plug specifically for this card it's pretty cool all right so that is not a lot of room <laughs> but that's what you have now what you have in here and i'll go ahead and take the card out so you guys can see it and we'll also take a look then at the compute unit and you can kind of look in there and see how it all goes together i got a couple screws up here this is really well engineered too they did a really good job on this okay i think yeah, what do i know i'm not an engineer i just like playing with them and i think they did a good job on it so unplug our power and then we'll go ahead and pull this out okay so as we get this out of the way right here this little bit right here this is the front header for your um, media reader your and your io up front here this little guy here is what makes it so i can't use these cards this is actually uh, just an evga card uh, 3060 which is kind of nice card but it has this metal back plate on it and it uh, interferes with this i mean just i mean just a couple millimeters uh, that's what that is this is an hp 3060 i bought used off of ebay kind of goes in like those uh, victus 15ls and those guys again this actually can fit but it sits cattywampus because this this uh, board is sitting on this so i wouldn't use that i would go um and i've seen them on sale for about 270 or so this is a 3060 and as you can see that's going to go in there no problem it fits great so any of these itx cards i've seen like uh 1070 um 1060s i've seen a bunch of those that are around 100 bucks or so that are the uh, the MSI arrows, the ITX GPUs that would drop in here work work pretty well. I think any of those would work. So you don't have to spend three hundred dollars on a GPU, and I certainly wouldn't, um, unless you just want to do that whole small form factor, tiny PC build. Then obviously, for three hundred fifty bucks, you have a pretty good starting point, I think. So we're gonna pull this up. So this is how you get into the inside. All right, so. I'm not going to unplug the, the fan, but there you go. So there's your insides. You have NVMe 1, NVMe 2. You've got your two RAM slots. That's that. You cannot replace the processor. It's soldered down because there's a laptop unit. Some of the newer Nooks, like the Nook 12 Extreme that my wife is now using, she's got that. It's got a 12700 with an RTX 4070. That's running very well for her she can edit videos she can do all of her work it has really made a big difference it's drawing a little more power than i was hoping to have in that office but it's manageable because the 47 is pretty efficient and it's not a 12700k it's just 12700 so it actually all operates pretty in a pretty good uh, efficiency envelope as far as i'm concerned it works pretty good all right so we'll go ahead and put this back together this whole device actually comes out this whole compute unit actually comes out i would love to have the i9 version of this um, but you know and they also have some xeon versions too they have some professional versions but for now this is fine i do enjoy just this part of the hobby just the tinkering and fiddling and fun part of it um, again these are the options i was looking at for gpus i already I bought this. I forgot what I paid for this. I think it might have been. Oh, I want to say it was right around 300 bucks, but this was a year or so ago. So is when prices were still kind of high. But this is a 3060 Ti and it does fit specifically made for this model. So rather than kind of, you know, throw something else in there, I'm going to go with what I paid the big money for. Let's get this out of the way. There we go. 
Come on, there we are. Okay. This will tuck back in there. We have some weather coming in. It is windy today. Okay, this will clip up in there like that. It is really cool how tight and compact this is. It's just, I really like this kind of stuff. I have some other small form factor stuff we're going to get to. I have a, uh, I have an, uh, an MSI Trident 3, which is a really small little unit. And boy, you talk, you talk about something that's dropped in price. I saw, and I, boy, I'm so tempted to. It's sitting over here. It's this guy over here. It's a that has the the i5 in it. They do have a 12700 version with a 3060, which would be like I think a really cool setup. But we're going to stick with what we have for now. Maybe if we can get some cash in, we'll look at some other ones. But for now, we're going to take a look at that one probably here in a couple weeks. But I wanted to show you this. We have a bunch of other videos that are in editing, but they're they got a lot of detail to them. I thought this might be kind of a, something fun to throw in the mix in the meantime. All right, so we've got our parts back together. So this is just like all um, mesh. That was the word. This is all mesh. So when this thing's cooking, when it's really like churning, <laughs> it's pulling in nice fresh air here. Uh, you have fans blowing hot air out the top, plus this is our top section. So we have these two fans which are blowing air out. So it actually stays pretty decent. Now, on our temps, will it hit max? <laughs> yeah. Um, the CPU will max out to 100 uh, if, if uh, given the opportunity. I have a couple tests that we've done that it did max out to 100. The GPU stays pretty decent, though. The GPU stays 80 you know maxes out at 80 and it's only there for a, like a moment it doesn't just sit there same thing with the 100 on the on the cpu it's not like it stays there forever it just can't hit that okay there and that's basically it um we'll go ahead and fire it back up make sure it's still working cool thing about this unit like versus the 12 this uh, actually has two nicks in it and I'm pretty sure one of them is a 2.5, which is kind of cool. So if you need that extra like horsepower on the networking side, at least you have that. Let's see here. Power. And yeah, it is really blowing out there. Okay, let's fire this back up. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up this video. Okay. So there we are, back up and running. Ta-da! All right, so now we are back up and running, and that's that. That's kind of a cool, uh, hopefully a, a fun little video for you guys. I really do love these units, the fact that you can pick these up now for 350 bucks. I mean, if you have spare parts in the drawer and you don't mind sourcing a GPU for not a lot of money, you could you know have this go to a sibling or go to one of your youngsters or... I don't know, a grandma, I don't know, granddad, somebody that could use a decent uh, computer, you could get something that's actually built pretty well, pretty nice, uh, and it's fun to, fun to hobby around with. So, guys, that's going to be it. If you guys have questions or you want to leave me some comments, I'd really appreciate it. Just put them down in the comment section below. And our next videos, we're going to wrap up our video that I did with Worm and Squirm, my nephews. Because uh, we finished the building, that whole build, and that was a lot of fun. So we've got that video coming up. That will hopefully be the next one. And then I've done two other builds. I've done a, an NZXT build, and I've done a thermal take build. So those are going to be coming up. Hopefully, I have to finish the thermal take. But hopefully, we'll have those coming up in a few weeks. And then we've also got the MSI. I've got a minis forum, micro PC. So we got a lot of things in the works, and I've got some cool HP 
uh, pre-built too. Again, a lot of this stuff that I'm working with, I'm, I'm looking at really budget, like buying used, buying at a discount, kind of working with spare parts here and there to make something, hopefully try and make something not out of nothing, but as close to nothing as possible, but something that's actually really fun and perform it on the other side of it. If this had more grunt horsepower, it would have been a perfect uh, system for my wife, but it just couldn't get it done on the video editing side. But for everything else, and I've done some game playing actually really quickly, just talking about it actually it's got some chops. I have uh, I have put Microsoft Flight Simulator on and X-Plane on this and used it down at our Civil Air Patrol Squadron as our flight simulator. We have G1000 secondary panels, so it was running three displays with a bunch of USB devices, and it was working great. It was working flawlessly in that capacity. So it definitely has some purpose and some power, and it is somewhat performant, but just couldn't get over the hump on the video editing side. So anyway. If it's something you guys are looking for, I'll put links to this unit in the video description and hopefully you guys can source your own rest of your parts. Guys, that's gonna be it. My name's Rick here with Dogwood Design Everything Tech. Thanks so much for watching. So first up, I would not buy this if you were trying to build, <laughs> hey hon, I'm filming, what you need? Oh, I'm sorry babe, I need to ask you an accounting thing, do you want me to call you when you're done? I'll call you when I'm done. Thank you. Bye.